Hello, in this video, we will cover how to solve different string programs in Java. Now to do the string programs, you need to know character class and string class methods. We have already explained these in separate videos. So in this video, we will focus on only how to use these functions to solve string programs. Now string programs are of two types. One which requires you to read the string character by character or one which requires you to read the string word by word. Each of them are further divided into three categories. In character level, first is where you are asked to only print some characters of the string, like print the ASCII code of all characters or print only the uppercase, lowercase, only digits or print the string removing spaces, etc. Second type is where you have to find count, like count the uppercase characters, lowercase characters, digits, vowels, or any specific character in the sentence. Third type is where in the program you have to form a new string. Let's say find the reverse of the string and check if it is a palindrome. Extract only digits or alphabets reversing the case of the string or it could be encoding the string like Big Latin program or the program could be to break the sentence into words and do some processing on it. These are also broken into three categories. For example, printing programs like print each word separately or print words starting with specific character or of specific length or just find some word. It could also be to count all words or specific words like in and or, or count words starting with capital letters or count words with specific length or words starting with a specific character. The third type is where you have to make a new string by making some changes in the word like capitalize each word or swap some word, delete some words or edit some words. So let's start with the first category of programs which requires you to break the string character by character. Now to do this program, you need a string input. This input could be taken in from the user using scanner class or you could be passed the string as a function parameter. The string could also be available to you as an instance variable. For our program, we will assume you have a string and we start the program from here. We will assume you know how to insert the program in main or a function as required by the question. Now to answer most of the string character level questions, you have to go from start to the end of the string character by character. This is called as string traversal. If we can create a template for string traversal, then our 50% of the problem is solved and we can just change the logic in it as per the question. So how do we create this template? Now in a string, characters are stored in index values starting from zero, like in arrays. So we will use a for loop to generate this index. This loop will start from zero and run till the length of the string. We will use the string length function to get the length of the string. Note this loop does not give us the character. It just generates the index numbers of the string. For getting characters, what we do is, as the first statement in this loop, we will write char c is equal to s dot char at i. We know this loop gives us value of i from 0 till the end of the string. Every time we just use char at function, which returns to us the character at that position i. So if we take a sample string, it's simple. Since the length is 10, this loop will run from 0 to 9, means 10 times. Every time it will return char at i, giving us each individual character of the string. So now we will use this template to answer different string questions. The first program is to take a string and print each character in a separate line. So we will take our template. This template is already traversing the string 
and giving us each character. So we will just add a print statement to print C. This gives us the program and the required output. The program could also be to print each character with its ASCII code. So in the print statement, we will just add typecast of C to int to give it its ASCII code. This gives us the program and the required output. Now if the program was to take a string and print only uppercase characters, we will again take our template which goes through the string and gives us its characters one by one. This time we will put in a check condition. We will use character dot is uppercase function and print only if this condition is true. This will print only uppercase characters of the string and give us the output. The same program can be changed to print only lowercase, digits or any alphabets or digit by just changing the character class function. Now instead of printing, what if the program was to count the uppercase characters? We will again take our template. Here we will first declare a variable to store count before the loop. Inside the loop, we will put in the same if condition to check for uppercase. If yes, we will just increment the count. Once we have checked the entire string, means we have completed the loop, we will print the count. This will print the count of uppercase letters. If the program was to count the lowercase letters too, then you will add another variable for lowercase, put another if condition inside the loop and check for lowercase. If yes, it will increment the count. Once outside the loop, you will print this count. This will give you the output of both separately. You can do the same thing with digits as well. Similarly, you can get a program to count a certain character, let's say R. So you will just change your if condition for it. You can also convert the character first to uppercase to avoid checking for both uppercase and lowercase. Or the program could be to count all vowels so you will change your if condition for all vowels. This will give you the program for vowels. Now what if the program is to create a new string from a given string? Let's say the program is to create a new string including only uppercase letters. We again take our template program. Now whenever we have to create a new string, we first declare an empty string at the start of the program or sometimes it is declared as an instance variable too. This time inside the loop, we just check if character is uppercase. If yes, we add it to the new string. Once outside the loop, we can print the new string. What if the program is to take a string and form a new string with all digits first and then the remaining characters? Here when we traverse, we need to split the string into two. One is for only digits and the other is to store the remaining. Once we are able to split into these two, then we can easily arrange them as required. So in our program, since we need two strings, before the for loop, we will initialize two string variables. In our loop, we will again put a if statement to check if character is digit. If yes, we add it to the string in the true condition, else we add it to the second string. Once we have finished traversal through the string, we just concatenate the digits first followed by the remaining string and print it. This gives us this program. You can get multiple variations of this program like to print uppercase first and then lowercase. We will just change the condition to uppercase and then lowercase. Or the program could also be to create a string after removing all space. Here again we get our template. We declare an empty string outside the loop. This time our if condition will have not to include white space. Once outside the loop, we will print it. This will give us the program to remove white space. The program could also be to reverse the case of the string. 
means all uppercase to be changed to lowercase and lowercase to uppercase. For this we will again take our template. We will declare an empty string outside the loop. We will check if the character is uppercase. If yes, we will change it to lowercase and then add it to our new string. Else we will convert it to uppercase and then add it to our new string. This will change the case of the entire string and then we can print it. So this is our program to change the case. The program could also be to find the reverse of the string. Here too we will first take our template. We will declare an empty string outside the loop. This time we will add the character to the beginning of the new string. This will reverse our string. Once we are out of the loop, then you can print the string. The same program can also be used for palindrome. Once the string is reversed, we can compare with the original string using equals ignore case. If both the strings are equal, then it is palindrome, otherwise it is not. Some of the string programs are string encoding or encryption programs like Piglatin. Piglatin is a secret language where each word is encoded as per some rules. For words beginning with vowels, we keep the word as is and just add way at the end. Eat is encoded to eat way. For words beginning with consonants, for example clear, we cut all consonants before the first vowel and move them to the end of the string. Then we append ay in the end. So we again take in the same template we have and declare a variable to store the piglatin before the loop. Inside the loop, we check if the character is a vowel or not. When we find a matching vowel, we check the value of i. If i is 0, means we found the vowel as the first character of the word itself, then we form the new string by just adding a way to the end of the string. If i is greater than 0, let's say 2, then we use substring function to break the string into two parts. We get the string starting from 2 till end by just giving substring i. Then we concatenate the initial part to end by using another substring function from 0 to i and lastly in the end we concatenate a y. This gives us the piglatin word and we can use break as our program is done here. Once done, we can print our piglatin string. Now the program could also be to encode the string in such a way that each letter is moved by 2. So A becomes C, B becomes D, Y becomes A and so on. So here too we will take our template. We will declare a variable to store the encoded string. One thing we need to check is whether the character was either Y or Z. In that case, it needs to be A and B respectively. So we will just do minus 26 to go to the beginning of alphabet character set. Every time we get a character, we add 2 every time. Then we will add it to our encoded string. Once we have encoded the entire string, we come out of the loop and print it. With this, we have done a set of programs which require you to do character by character manipulation. As we discussed, there are some programs where you have a sentence and you have to do some manipulation on words in that sentence. Like find the longest word, capitalize each words in a sentence, etc. Those programs we will cover in our next video. If you have any doubts, you can always reach out to us at simplycoding.in. Thank you and all the best.